Uh, welcome back to Everything From Nothing, Ireland's most inquisitive podcast. Um, if you like the show and you want to support us, you can support us the price of uh, a loaf of milk or a carton of bread once a month by uh, uh, to, to our Patreon at patreon.com slash Ireland's podcast. And yeah, we'd really appreciate the support. And if you can't f- do that or whatever, you can um, e- subscribe to our YouTube. will help go a long way and stuff. Um, yeah, so today's guest... Um, we're jo- joined by a man from um, Galway who's uh, he's a land healer and um, I suppose he's better known as the fairy whisperer. Um, Pat, can you explain sort of where, what's the story behind why why are you known as the fairy whisperer? In the olden days, I suppose going back a hundred years ago, we were known as fairy doctors. Okay, fairy doctors. And especially up Clare's side and up that way, but. Uh, Listen, who wants to be called a doctor in these days? Oh, you're dead yeah. right, Pat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she, Haley's a doctor, so that's funny. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. You can buy a doctor. You can be, you can buy a doctor of a name or a doctor of medicine. Whichever you have money, you can buy. But you can't buy what I have. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. true. And um, so, like, when, when was it, from a young age, like, had you sort of had the experiences, uh, was it... Yeah, like when when did you start having experiences? Um, sorry, with the fairy folk, the other folk. Well, I, su- I I suppose I can go back to national school, the international school. I suppose maybe go for around 12, 13, 14 years of age, in around that time, you know. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And that was when 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 it really kicked off, and uh, look at uh, it was nothing really different I suppose as I thought of any other one you know what I mean but in rural Ireland you don't go around telling your business to everyone either kind of you know yeah yeah and um what was what like what was the sort of I don't know was it sort of a gradual thing or was there one experience that where you like kind of felt like okay like the the sort of fairies that the fairy folk that they had revealed themselves to you or was it sort of a did you find them or did they find you Sorry, I'd say they found me. Yeah, yeah. It was they that found me to, to, to be quite honest about it, you know? Yeah. And Pat, like you you said that one of the first times that you saw the fairies, you took a drink with them. I read that yeah, you said that. Yeah, I did. A lot of people says you shouldn't take anything from the fairies. Yeah, why mm. is that? Uh, look at... Uh, it could look for something in return back, you know, and you know... But I did take a drink from them because, look at it, going back in in ancient times, it's I suppose it it was a highly insult not to take something from somebody. Yeah. If you go back to to the old Celtic ways and even before that, you were offered a gift, you should take it. Yeah. And <laughs> I did take the drink off them and I enjoyed it. What's a lot more to tell you? Yeah. Well, what kind of drink was it? It was a whiskey. Oh, nice. nice. It was a whiskey. I, I, I actually did enjoy it, and, and I still enjoy taking a whiskey, and even not from <laughs> the fairies. But yeah. the, the, the thing is, is that uh, a lot of people had hang-ups about fairies, and look at our, 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 our culture as such, I suppose, in Ireland, was, was, was formed on drink as well which was a bad thing, really, mm. because we don't drink that much at all. We have it only in our heads. The Europeans yeah. drink a lot more than us, you it's, know. Yeah, it's really true. We're going around Boston about what we can drink. And, <laughs> and, and you take the Scandinavians and the Germans. The Polish. Have, yeah, and the, po- the Polish people. Jesus. The Polish man. people that have more drank during the day's work than we drink. And yeah, we yeah. To drink it. That's and a- I don't go around talking about but. Yeah. It, it, it had a hang up, I suppose, with the fairies and uh, and that culture. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the fairies like to tr- drink, uh, play music. Uh, they like the horse hunting as well, hunting on horses and hunting, hunting the foxes. And I suppose it's 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 a kind of a rural Ireland thing, really. And I I think during this lockdown, in some way has brought people out walking again and they can see that there's moss growing on a stone mm. what they've never seen before or to see a tree that fell over and is budding again or, or, or a mouse a mouse across on the road which they wouldn't have seen so i think 
Yeah. Look at it's more normal than you think. Yeah. People comes to me asking me about fairies and fairies and and like the only reason it's not it's not normal to these people is is because they haven't got out of their motor cars, <laughs> they haven't mm. got out of their homes, and they haven't got out and sat down on the wet clay and yeah. absorbed the water. Do you know what I mean? Hundred so percent. I think from now on. The amount of people I get now, even during the lockdowns, is unreal ringing me and asking me questions, you know, mm. which is brilliant. Yeah. yeah. The white horn tree, is it? A, was it the white horn and another tree, that's a portal to the fairy world? Is that what you were saying? Yes, the white horn and the black horn, where the, black, where the white horn and black horn meet, it's a portal to the fairy world. Okay. And when you get into the fairy world, like, how would you know you're in it? Like, the small, is it subtle? Like, it's very subtle. It's very peaceful. It's okay. extremely peaceful. You get this inner peace that, uh, look at, I'm just going to put this outside now because there's calls coming in. No just worries. Me for <laughs> no hassle, no hassle. No rush at all. Yeah, it's, have you any, have you any f- fairy experiences in yourself when you were in Ireland since? No, only me to you, Kieran. Oh, <laughs> I, I, yeah. <laughs> Have you any fairy experiences? Me- meeting me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Hugh, Hugh, I definitely think you're a changeling too, Hugh. <laughs> I think we might. I don't know. There's Sorry about that, guys. No, but there's no, yeah. no hassle no at all. Worries. You know, I, I have a young one driving a tractor and she's stuck at the present minute, but I'll go out there in a few minutes, you know? Yeah, no, that's that's no worries at all. Hey, come here, but, um, how, it's very subtle, is it? Being in it's the fairy ver- world. Yes, it's very subtle. So it is. It's, it's, um, some people gets great inner peace, yeah. the serious inner peace, serious uh, oh, emotion as well. Both mm. you get you get the, the equilibrium of both. You, some people gets very emotional, and it's a uh, it's uh, some people go into a trance. There's, there's different. There's four or five different things people can experience, and then some people experience nothing at all. Wow. Yeah. Why? Why do you think the ones that don't experience it? Do you think it's because they're going into it expecting not to experience it? Like, I missed you there. Now, what? Did like you the p- the people you were saying, like some people don't experience anything at all. Do you think that's sort of a case of either one, the the um, you know, the other crowd, they don't feel comfortable revealing themselves, or number yes. two, it's sort of like um, because they're going into it not expecting it and not believing in it. Do you think that actually blocks the sort of yeah, like blocks them from seeing them. You, 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 you'll, you'll get the people. You'll always get the skeptic. Yeah. He shuts his mind down or her mind down, and that's it. It's a one-track system. But I can safely say that ninety-nine percent of the people find some little experience. Yeah. I, on your on your land specifically, you're talking about like our, because your land seems to be like, I don't know, a very um. It's the most common place, I don't know, I've heard of anywhere people having those experiences. Yeah, it is. It, I'll tell you, it is. It's It's a very, um, I can't explain it to you in English. I suppose it's a very, it's a very special piece of land. There's 16 acres of yeah. land that is special. Yeah. That's, that's different in the landscape for a start. It, it's risen land. It's, 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 there's a curtain on it. You know, three yeah. and a half thousand years old curtain, and then there is another hill beside the curtain that's even older again with another passage tomb or cave or whatever you want to call yeah. it. So, like these guys, when they built these these tombs here and that, they knew that there was special energies here. Mm. They didn't just come along because they had no earth moving equipment, they had no real real stuff to dig hard clay. So they they kind of. When you when you set foot on a special area of of land or piece of land, you know it. You you know you know that you, you hear the people talking about, and I suppose the hollow ground like Croke Park and, yeah. and and places like that. You know, but that all came from the country where there was hollow ground. People stood on hollow ground, and the hollow ground and the hollow sound is the ground underneath. Do you know what I mean? And that comes from. I suppose the other world, you know. Yeah, yeah. 
if I can, if, if you understand what I'm saying, no, the I hollow, you, you, you heard, you hit a, a tree, it was hollow, you heard the hollow tree. Yeah, yeah. You, you heard the hollow, you heard the hollow, the hollow, the, the hollow ground. Well, well, that's what I, I have. And look at, I suppose I don't want to blow me on trumpet either. There's no point in blowing me on trumpet too much, as, as, as the lad said, because mm-hmm. you, 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 you'll only sicken people. But <laughs> I, I, it yeah. is special, and I have a few different things there, like as 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 when the railway was dug out in eighteen forties or eighteen forty five during the height of the great the great famine catastrophe in Ireland, uh, they found seven halberds, oh, yeah. Yeah. which is a ceremonial sword, you know, used by the Celts. They were the biggest swords, ceremonial swords found in Ireland. Okay, right, and. Uh- London now or somewhere, are they? They're in London, they think. Now, oh, listen, yeah. we're blessed with government people that doesn't understand archaeology or Ireland. So, <laughs> yeah, that's so true. That's... You know, I, I have a little piece of documentation on it that I got from Dr. Christy Conniff, an archaeologist. And to be quite honest, I just can't lay my hands on it at the present minute. I, I sh- and it showed where this guy done a thesis on it in 1913 on these halibuts. Okay. Wow. And he called this place Hollywood instead of its natural state, Hillswood. Wow. No way. Yes. That's so and mad. Yeah, uh, uh, Dr. Christy Kniff uh, printed it off for me. But it's here somewhere in the house. But this house, is there's four kids in it. So you'd want to be a safe man to bet anything where you'd live down anything. It's moved 15 times <laughs> before you know what happened. But yeah. The document evidence is actually there that this was sacred land to the Celts as well, you know, which came in after the fairies and that all religious sectaments had had layers of people come here, you know, from, I suppose, what the few old standing stones that is there, the mm. Stone Age men, then onto the Celts, then onto the Bronze Age, do you know what I mean? And then I had a settlement of an old house where the monks of Kilconnell came down and used it as a rest house when they were Whoa. sick. So look at, it's not just me. I didn't just come along in the last few years and say, "Oh Lord mm. God, lads, this is a sacred place." Yeah, you know, yeah. We must, we must, uh, we must. Uh, you know what I mean? The land told you it was a sacred place, sort of thing. Something about uh, the steeples in modern churches uh, come, are derived from those standing stones, or absolutely, oh. absolutely. You see. You see, the, the, I suppose our, our, our Christian faith that we know today uh, is not native to Ireland at all. You know, mm. it's a Middle Eastern religion. Yeah. You know, like... All the, roads the lead religion. to Rome. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the three religions that we know today came from Abraham. Yeah. You know, so look, we adopted them as best we could, I suppose, and as whatever mm. way we wanted to, to interpret it. But we had our own religion before the Romans and the British took us here. We 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 were known as as a, 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 as a Druidish people who let, who honoured the land which gave us life, where we came from and where we're going back to. Yeah. And just to get back to this, the 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 standing stones and 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 I have a spear stone that's knocked over at the present minute, and I I think it's going to stay that way. But. They had these standing stones and they were drawn drawn from the sky, you know, the the the, the, the energy from the sky. Okay. And what is What what do you mean by that, Pat? Like they, they were drawn by the they, they were put upright by from the energy draw, from the sky. Well, look at I I suppose today we're trying to land stuff on the moon and Mars and all these places. So yeah. these guys was lying out on a hill of a frosty night and they were looking up at the sky and there was no pollution mm. and there was no, and they could see these stars fairly well mm. plus the fact that they had mathematics that we haven't encountered today yeah and they knew that there was magic up there they knew there was magic in the sky and yeah. they could tell you by the moons they knew that the moons could turn the sea and that the moons could 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 do an awful lot of thing on Earth. You could sow the crops with the moons. You could harvest on the moons. 
Yeah. You, you, you wouldn't you you wouldn't go for a blood pressure test on a, on a full moon, you know. So there, there's different things, and they knew that the magic was in the sky. But the real the real magic of the Druidish people was in the soil, the earth. Yeah. Because the earth is where we came from, and the earth is where we're going back to, and the earth that feeds us, that black dark soil. Mm. Now you wouldn't know much about that up in Tipperary. You have nice, you have nice. We have good grass, good green uh, grass. You have good grass and good fine soil and all that stuff. Yeah. But <laughs> the black soil down here, as as we could yeah. do with with, with a, 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 a plow, you'll hear the roaring at you with stones and and and, and stuff. But that's what gave us life, guys. Yeah. Hey, and what do what do fairies make of uh, Saint Patrick? <laughs> you see. The, 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 the big thing about St. Patrick was is his religion was slightly different to the Roman religion as well. Mm. He was very entangled with nature. Yeah. So, I suppose, the way the fairies looked at St. Patrick was as he was another invader, mm. which would develop into an Irish citizen again, which he he did. Yeah. You know? And he became, I suppose, unique to to the world as as, as a converter of, uh, of the Roman Catholic religion here. But he wasn't the first Roman Catholic here. The Roman Catholic religion had been here, according to the fairies, and other Christian beliefs, you know. Mm. So, like, the fairies has come along with a lot of I can say invaders, they took them on board, they let them run their course because time time to the fairies is eternal. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 like I I suppose it took fifteen hundred years for the Roman Catholic religion to be put onto the rocks like today. Mm, yeah. You know, so you that fifteen hundred years to the fairies is only the same as look at not in like always waiting for fifty years for an all Ireland. Do you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. It's hard to still, <laughs> like have the same mentality. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And he, you know that. So like, and I'm not trying to be smart now. Give me all people. You can go to Roscommon as well, and you can go to County Leitrim and different. They're places. not the only ones waiting, no. no. You know, like so. Like, I'm. Time, the fairies and time means nothing. Yeah. Time is internal to the fairies. So, you see, I, I don't know. They will wait their turn. Mm. You know, they will wait their turn and take their revenge. And yeah. Pat, what kind of form do the fairies take when they appear to you? Like, how do you see them or experience them? You, you, look at, you'll see them in your own image. Uh, like a reflection of y you or... Do you mean no, uh, the same height? Uh, uh, my smallish girl there now, or second smallish girl, seen them there a few years ago. There, and she was only six, mm. and she's seen them at her height. Okay, right. But, but I do see them at five eleven or five ten at my height, you know. Yeah. But they take so on. You they, will see a ref they appear as human characteristic. Absolutely, and yeah. another great thing the fairies has is is that little bit of uh, mischievousness I suppose. <laughs> yeah that's and and just to get back to it lad says to me oh jesus uh how could you see the fairies at 5 11 when they're only two inches you know mm. and i just said uh, how did we make out in ireland that we were the biggest race of people in europe when we were the smallest race of people in europe yeah and we still are. You stand in again a Scandinavian or a German or a Russian. Yeah. We're looking up at them. Yeah. And like we go back to the drink. How did we make out we were the greatest drinkers in the world? <laughs> we couldn't drink. We couldn't drink an egg stand of whiskey and we were drunk. Like that. Like the Irishman have, it's That's the opposite right. story. Like you the fairies. Oh yes, the fairies is two inches, like. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, so what it's great that we're able to, to 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 tell the opposite story and believe the opposite. Everyone believes lies mm. in Ireland. Nobody believes the truth. 
One yeah. thing an Irishman won't believe is the truth. He will believe <laughs> a lie. Uh, that's a good that's sentence. A good thing, no? No. That's a good thing that we uh, makes us feel better. It, it makes yeah, us feel, yeah. and, 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 and the reason it makes us feel better is we're cutting one of our own. Yeah. We have one up on another Irish. Yeah. So we're after yeah. him a bag of lies, and he's after swallowing it, hook, line, and sinker. <laughs> yeah. like a big salmon. He took the whole bloody lot down into his gut, and he ran with it. And he told another lad, and it's getting bigger. The mouse is becoming an elephant at this stage. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking brilliant. Oh my God. Uh, Pat, I read um, in, in <laughs> one of the newspaper articles, you talked about the stray. So t- yeah. there's talking about the fairies putting the stray on you. What's that? The stray or the Fogian Mara in, okay. in Gaelic. You know, the stray is a thing that when you're crossing certain fields and even today on the road there's a lot of people that say well Lord Jesus Christ I travelled that road a hundred times and you know what I'm going to have to take a wrong turn and it happened to every single one I talked to there's no one yet to yeah. the yeah. best lorry driver in the country Yeah, I talked to the well fuck me Patty said I know the road very well and didn't I take a wrong turn and I got caught above on another road he says and I couldn't turn back to and it's happening all of that is part of the fairy stray mm. and the the the, the, the Fogian Mara the Fogian Mara was very very common one time because people was constantly walking people would walk home across from whatever business they had instead of going two mile they could go a mile because they could cut off across the field and now and again they would cross where let's say there was a fairy road and the fairies was crossing that road and they happened to interrupt them. Mm. The fairies would put the Foji and Mara on them. And oh. that would put a stray on them that they would not recognize their own their own house or their own people. Oh. Yeah, that's so nice. Yes. They wouldn't recognize their own people. You could meet your own people on the road and you wouldn't recognize them. So it was really a protective and thing that the fairies did to protect themselves and their land. And Yeah, I, I, I'll tell you what now. I was up in Tipperary there a few years ago doing a, a, a job. I won't say what it was. Getting a look at some good soil, getting a break from yeah, the Yeah, but the I, do, 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 we, were, we were working at night, and uh, and uh, this guy said to me, he, he was asking me about the Fogey and Morrow. There was nine, four or five of us sitting around drinking, drinking tea, sitting on the side of the road. But, uh, you know, and I started explaining to him. But he said his neighbour about... Uh, uh, let's say a year of a year ago before before that's about three years ago but a year before that his neighbor had a few drinks in a local pub i won't mention any pubs or places because ireland is hard small but <laughs> yeah. he said his neighbor left the pub around half 11 or 12 o'clock at night he was stopped in cork city going up a one-way street by the guards hmm. and the guard says to him uh, where are you from? And he told them the little village. He says, and this is what are you doing up here? He says, I'm on my way home. I was down at Mickey Joe's, we'll call it, having a few pints. He says, and I'm on my way home. Well, they says you're in County Cork now. You're going up a one-way street and they slapped a fine on him. But he couldn't, he couldn't explain to people how he had got from the far side of the bridge of Portumina in Tipperary, mm-hmm. Cock Jordan area, mm. all the way to Cork City. That is mad. He never remembered going and he couldn't have been mad drunk or he wouldn't have found his way. The car had went in over the ditch. He hadn't a great car either indeed. Yeah. But, like, there is great instances. I hear great instances of it now but it happens to people and people say, oh, Lord Jesus, I don't know what I was thinking of me. It was not right when I'm after taking the wrong road. But it's very common. It's mm. it, that says to me, oh, Jesus, you're the only one that happened. And not at all. It's happening. It's happening to people. Even people driving along the road. That guy drove along the road, you see, and he hit up with a fairy, with a fairy crossing or a fairy, a fairy, a, a fairy wedding or something. He joined in. He didn't know. And he ended up in County Cork. That's so mad. That's crazy. I think like when you said like the lads who are saying like, oh, like, you know, there are very few people had those experiences. I remember when I was younger, like, which, you know, isn't that long ago, like, things changed quickly, like, with people being indoors a lot more, because, like, you hear lots of stories like that from all ages, 
And now I think there's why there's more people saying like, um, oh, you're the only one that took the wrong road is because those people aren't walking the roads like you said earlier on. Is just like, m- like I'm not saying maybe, but like maybe there's they might take the wrong road if they actually went for a walk <laughs> on the roads. I don't know. Like it's sort of it always kind of goes back to that. Like sort of um, people just being disconnected from nature and you know. Yeah, yeah but, but people is always disconnected. Well, you see, another big theory is is people will never admit to being made a fool by somebody. You know? Yeah. And the fear is, well, by Jesus, the one, the one make a fool of me. <laughs> I was talking to a, a friend of mine. He's up in Offaly. He's a mechanic. Tommy is his name. He's an old book. But yeah. uh, there's a fairy fort right behind his house. And... Uh, he says he cannot keep vice grips, but they're <laughs> stealing the vice grips on him. Do you know what I mean? And hiding them on him yeah. and taking them. Yeah. And he's gone, he's gone stone mad over it. And he's years ahead, he said. That's what bad. do they want this for? Huh? What do the fairies want the vice grips for? Just to be mischievous, well, I imagine. It's something that they took to the liking of. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, <laughs> no one knows. I'd tell them that, that they'll put him out of business if they start opening up a garage. <laughs> they just took to the and they're driving him stone mad. That's funny. They're driving him internally mad. So they are by taking them. And you believe about like ring forts? If you interfere with a ring fort, you're you're in for trouble, like. If you interfere with a ring fort, you're in big trouble. Yeah. You're in. I, I I tell you what. Now I do do a lot of land healings for people and different things. And the the, the stories I'm hearing and coming across is is actually is actually bloody well frightening. Now it's it's frightening. I I, I was this day a week now. I was up in County Cork. I was doing a land healing for people in County Cork where they had a ring fort and a few mm-hmm. little things. Just I'll give you just a quick example. Yeah. Uh, the one who I'm talking about, anyway, people. But, but this guy got a bit of land from his uncle or his, I think it was his uncle or relation. I'm not fully sure which of them now. But his father and 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 that that they cut all the bushes around the uh, the the ring fort, so they gathered them all up in in April into a huge big pile, and he shoved them into a pile. And he, he he set fire to the pile, oh. and he stood at the pile and he was burning them. And he was shoving them in with the front loader of the tractor. And didn't the tractor stop it and in the fire? Oh. And burnt the tractor to pieces. Jesus. So just he was lucky to get out himself now. That's so nice. that's only one example. That happened yeah. last Saturday now. That's fresh in my mind. I could Jesus. I could write a book on it, you know. And Pat, what um could you tell us a bit more about the land healings? Like how how do you approach them and what might people ask for the land healings for? People will come to me as a last resort. I am have, have everything else tried. People that has land, that cattle and sheep or horses will go again them for no reason. Uh, where there's debts on, a, on, on, on a human debts as well as animal debts. Mm. People with animal debts these days really don't care because a lot of people are disconnected from animals so they don't it's really when it comes inside the door that they, they say, oh, Jesus, we must ring that that guy down in Galway and see, what, see what's yeah. his opinion on it. You know, but I, a lot of people will find that where they have farms or their fathers bought farms and didn't know what and done things that the land starts to go from you. Mm. And as a temporary land will know if the ball starts to go from you and you're trying to pick it with a hurdle, it's next to impossible. No matter how, how <laughs> what well the grass is cut or that, it'll just roll away. It'll stay gone from you. Yeah. And that's the way it is with, with a lot of the land healings. I have a lot of people coming to me, I suppose, in the last 12 months with with, 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 with stories of, of, of horrendous things that happened to them, you know, and... And frightening things. I only gave the tractor there now. That's only a simple one, but I could give you, I could give you one now that I put the hair stand in your head, but don't. But just, just, just don't, I don't need to. But I do go and I, I kind of, I kind of straighten out things and, and try and get the good energies back on the, get the good energies back on the property and get the thing. Uh, do, do you use you know, rods when you're doing it? I do. I do, I do, I do. I use, I well, I have a copper ring that I use, and what I generally do is, a, a guy would send me on on WhatsApp 
a map of his farm or his house. I do a lot of house healings as well, where people can't sleep at night and are lazy and all this stuff. And they'd send me it on, and I'd work on that then maybe for a few days before I'd call to you. And I'd know what I was doing. And then I'd, I'd put all the, the bad energies outside your property, and I'd put down four copper rings in each corner of your field, and I'd do the healings. And... I have no complaints yet now, to be quite honest. Yeah. And I was Did... going out to America there to do it. And I, I do I was offered to go to England there now. I have a few old a few old deers out in England, old 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 lassies that uh, <laughs> big landed people and, and they're yeah. they're they're mad for me to go out. and I, I might just go out when things settle. I just might. I, I'm not pushed like, but I yeah. just might do it. <laughs> That's right. I, I uh, right. kind of got that done, but I, I was skeptical of it at first. So he was an I architect, was, you? yeah. Yeah, it gave me the rods, and I just thought this is nonsense, you know. Until I got the pull off, and I got a fright of my life. So I, I really believe it now. And they did. They they got their they they were deciding where to put the house, you know. Well, you see, it's going back to the fairy, the fairy whisperer again. Uh, he was called in a hundred years ago before you built a house. That's what they were doing, yeah. You look you look at any of the flooding now. Mm. There is no very few old farmhouses flooded. Mm. There is no big estates flooded, say landlords' estates or that. Yes. Because they were the first men that was called in mm. before there was a, a, a stone laid or a scrawl rose was the, to see was there any disturbance underneath or overhead. Yeah. And your house was placed in the right place. It wasn't placed in the flood bay and valley or some stupid place, springs and that, you know. Yeah, well, that's what's actually going on there. Is it kind of an electrical thing or something? What what is going on? Ah, uh, look at knows, but... I, I there's a lot of people tells me that they understand it, but I personally don't. Okay. And I, uh, you know, the smart lads out there that understands everything. I don't know. It's you see, every we're all balls of energy. Everything mm. is energy. So if you're able to, to harness the energy and it comes to you, yeah. you know what you're doing. Don't ask me how you know what you're doing. I yeah. suppose this is an Irish question to an Irish problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's funny. How, how long has the farm been in your family, Pat? Well, I suppose we're going back here three generations and then we had relations that was here before us. Yeah, right. Nice. We're going back. I suppose we're going to be, we going back to the 1700s. Okay, right. And, and your dad, I understand, was quite a big um, historian on the area and was into his folklore and... and he, he, he had... He was even more into it than I was because he had more time. Okay. There was no pressures like today. Yeah. There was no pressures of, of, of modern society on him. Uh, nobody could ring him because he had no phone. Yeah. <laughs> so you had to call. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And when you called, he could take a break from work. I remember guys coming and all the time, all the time, people coming for healings and people coming for all sorts of history. He was a big history man. I, I suppose he, the real thing he was interested in was land as well. You see, land. He liked the land and, 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 and he liked he, the Irish way of life, you know. Uh, it, was, it was nothing unusual about it, I suppose. It was just yeah. the way of life. That was the, 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 the thing. Yeah. And for the healing, Pat, you'd said um, in, in uh, an article that I read that the fairies had passed on the word to your father and that, that enables the healing or assists with the healing. Yeah, there, there, there is some connection there. It's like the, what that man asked me about the, wa the wire and the, that. We don't know what the, the connection is, but it is. Mm. it was passed on. We have, now, you want to be very careful in what you're saying about healings to people because, yeah. Yeah. my God, you, I, I don't go around saying I can do this, that, and the other. I, it'd be wrong to be do that. But I'm confident enough to say that there's people alive today that I have people alive today. Yeah. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say what anymore of what I heal or that because look at yeah. Instead of driving a 23-year-old Jeep, 
I could be driving a Spaniel Merc if I started going on that way. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. You know, like then, then then you're going away from what I am. And to be quite honest, I'm happy <laughs> doing what I am. That's yeah. really you know cool. What I mean, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's that's the purpose of it. That's how it should work. You yeah. know, I don't keep I don't keep really records of what I do do. Yeah. Or mm. who does come to me. Yeah. Or why they do come. Yeah. And a lot of people then had come to me for healings and sure I'd had them for God again and just they could ring me up maybe two months later and they say you never rang me to come back. Yeah. No, I'd say I, I really don't ring anyone to come. It's up to yourself to come. Like, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. And if you know, like a lot of people I don't have any secretaries or anything. Evelyn does does the the bit of paperwork that we have to do, which is is is, is small enough, but I wouldn't be going around looking for people or begging people, mm -hmm. but I will help yeah. people and I do go do the land healings for people and I do 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 what I can to help. That's all yeah. I can say. Yeah. You feel the energy uh, changing the land when you're working on it. Oh yeah. You can you can I can feel it changing. Yeah. I, when I'm doing the land healings, I feel that energy changing from 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 this heaviness into the lighter, a light a nice light energy, you know? Yeah. I ask um what what what's your what do you like just because you're talking about like the balls of energy and stuff what do you think um what's your belief or understanding of what happens to us when we die when we leave this body and when we die is it yeah well I suppose uh I death 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 was a, a, a <laughs> is a is a is a funny is a funny um is a funny animal to be. To be playing around with, but mm. death in the old days was not not that bad, you know. And like I have a banshee stone on the farm here now, and and and, and this will answer your question maybe better than I'll answer it for you, you know. Yeah. I know. And uh, the banshee was often sitting on this stone, and the old man now walked down the road with her a few times, but uh, he said. That when he was young, you'd hear a person dying for three weeks. They'd be roaring in pain. They'd be tied to the bed. The neighbors would be minding them, giving them all they had was a drop of putchy. <laughs> and after yeah. a while, the alcohol would get weak in their body because the pain would be so bad, you'd have cancers or whatever, you know. But if you're relieving someone, say maybe at six o'clock in the evening or nine o'clock at night coming in, I'd be going in to relieve you guys, one of you guys. I'd come in and I'd say, the banshee was her. I heard the banshee tonight. She's crying out the road. Mm. The whiskey would be taken down and there'd be a celebration because they knew the person in the bed was about to leave this world, you know? So they'd have a celebrate, like it would be a, yeah, a celebration. Yeah, you had a little celebration. Well, the pain was over and the suffering, you know? That's, that makes so much sense to me. Like, like in Mexico, like there's a lot of cultures still do that, like, and it's so acceptable to sort of, why wouldn't you celebrate pain is over? I don't know. I get why it's hard as well, so I'm not trying to shut down. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. We all, but, like, it's easy to talk about it to some other yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. I suppose when it crosses your door, it's It different. is hard, definitely, yeah, but, so... Look at it. if you have, if you had like we had, we were primitive people, I suppose. After the famine, we were after coming out of a famine, and we had a few little skirmishes or wars before the great civil war and the great, the great, the great war of independence. So people was weakened. Your our bodies was mm. weakened as well. We had no medicines, and the churches had a grip on us. Mm. We, we, had, we were in a fear factor as well we were afraid to die yeah. but if you go back to the Celts and those guys that <laughs> fought in the great wars yeah, they weren't yeah. afraid to no, die definitely weren't. they weren't afraid to die running into <laughs> battle naked against armoured men like they didn't give a yeah. absolutely and, 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 and you know I suppose it was a bit of a way of a, a, a of the great Romans and the great Roman armies frightening the shit in you too. Mm. Like when you're gone, you're gone forever and don't ever forget that. Yeah. So you're a fool thinking that you're going to come up again us and, <laughs> and get killed and live on. You know what I mean? So Yeah, that's really no, true. Uh, I that, hope that answers your question. No, it, it definitely. Was it that fear of death? Like, do you think that was a kind of a Roman thing, that fear that we're gone, you're gone for good? 
Yeah, I think it was because I think the great Celtic cultures and 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 that look at wasn't afraid to die. I, I, I look at it. Look at Bobby Sands. We're, we're on the anniversary of his hunger strike now. Yeah. That man wasn't afraid to die. Absolutely not. No. You know what I mean? And yeah. You know what I mean? And and like, I have known the Sands family now, and and and, and his mother and that, and oh, the pro- oh. that 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 the the pressure that the churches mounted inside and outside the prison of a religious thing, you know. Mm. So. Like it takes special people in special things, and I suppose we're all a kind of like everyone has to have a fear of something. Yeah. There's yeah. no one yet that hasn't a fear of something, you know. What do you and think about the the culture of modern medicine and kind of what it's done to to healing and sort of changing the approach and how people live? What's your opinion on that? My opinion on that is it's like everything. Modern medicine is a great addition to anything. Mm. It should be embraced. But when you see modern medicines being abused, yeah. it's a different thing. Like, there is two haves and have-nots in modern medicine, and I suppose the real look at that is if you look at the United States, the people yeah. that has the money, mm-hmm. yeah. they can buy medicines that is brilliant. Mm. Yeah. And the people that can't just hasn't and they have lost the art of the healing yeah, yeah. So they are caught in a dark area yeah. then they're on mm. a road that there is no bloody bridge you know yeah. yeah yeah like we've really lost touch with our own ability to heal ourselves and in ireland i suppose and i'm only talking about ireland now because i don't know much about other other nations you know but in ireland we lost an awful lot of our healing power mm. Mm. And we lost an awful lot of knowledge in it, what's even more so. Because if you look at the famine, 1840 to 18, 1850, we'll, go, we'll give her a 10 year, we'll give her a 10 year spin, you know? Yeah. Uh, the, the famine in, in, in my area here, around this part of the world, there was people had gone into the bogs and into the, the rough lands as we call them you know mm. into communities you can call them little metals of people so in these communities of people they had learned that one acre of potatoes could keep a family going for the year in protein one acre so okay. one and, acre and yeah. what was that and what was the what, size of the family then average would it be bigger families then or People were starting to get married at 14, when, when childbearing age was. Mm. Uh, but this is the most ironic thing now. This is, where, this is where we have to be, to listen very carefully now to this. We had gone into little segments of, gone back into a culture of, of tribalism. This is why a lot of people don't understand, or don't want to, is another question. So... We really hadn't chiefs formed at this stage, but we weren't far off. Mm. We had gone pure independent. We had gone into our medicines. We had our, we had our healers. We had our plant medicines. We had learned again how to divine for water, spring water. So we were gone really back into a vegetarian diet. Yeah. With rabbit for meat. We had a pig. We had a cow in the village for milk. So the landlords were starting to look at us. Not maybe the higher echelons of landlords, but the middle class landlord again under the landlord. And he was saying, these lads are starting to live a bit longer than they should. We had pushed mm. our li- lifespan from the average age of 34, 5 into a pork. Once we had the rent paid to the landlord, we had no need to kill ourselves working for slavery. Mm. We had our medicines, we had our music, <laughs> and we had no churches, yeah. as we call them, the the, the religious the Christian church, we'll call them for a broader name. But yeah. We were gone independent, we were gone back to the land. But here comes the famine. 
and it strikes us down. And yeah. The churches, the churches went up on the rock and the, the, the said, now people that had survived, these medicine men and these fairies and these fairy doctors and these people has let you down. And if you look at Ireland and go through Ireland, most of the churches was built from 1840s to 1850s, stone structures with slab left. Yeah. yeah. You know, a millions was dying. We weren't able, we weren't able, but they were starting to build churches. And that was to reclaim their ground that they had lost. Yeah. Because from about, from about, I suppose, 1798 after the rebellion, we had gone we had gone into a tribal state again. We knew that we were kind of beaten for a few years, you know, that the British had taken us. We had tried a few risings that didn't succeed. So the yeah. real poor man had learned to live off the land. He had learned to forage. Yeah. What did the he was going back into what did the church think of yeah. 17, what did the church think of seventeen ninety eight like? Church, what did the church think of any risings had? The, the church was 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 really pro British at the top, you know. Yeah. And they, 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 they kept the structure. They wanted law and order. Yeah. And they didn't want they didn't want the likes of us. I suppose small farmers. And 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 people like that rising up, and saying, guys. We are the men of the land or the women of the land, you know. Mm. And even in the even in, 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 in if you look at if you look at the, the, the Easter Rising, yeah. like they killed all the poets, the British, the visionaries, you know. Yeah. Men that had no real interest in religion whatsoever, you know, brought they had no real interest in any of that stuff at all. They were visionaries of a land of of greatness so yeah. these people needed to be taken out you know definitely so what better do, what way of doing it is the great it's, armies of the world you know yeah it is like it is and it is weird like it was it was a it was a smart move as well because it is you know like you think that it's like the smartest thing is when you're fighting someone it's like yeah you take out the bigger men but it's like no it's like uh do the, the sort of building strength like the power of like the mind of a poet is far more influential than the power of a man with big arms or that, like you know. Um, well, in the Druidish times, the poets was the the judges. Yeah. So you know, what I mean, yeah, the poet was the judge, and he knew, he knew, he knew the law of the land. The law of the land is different to the law of, of churches, or different to the law yeah. of. The, the, the land was there before the church was built. Of course, the, and it'll be there when we're all gone. It'll be <laughs> yeah. there again and flourish again. Hey, can can I ask you a question about when I was asking earlier about that question about like um, uh, about like the the whole death thing? The reason I was asking is because like you know I do like you know with the other world and stuff. I've always wondered with the fairies, like back to the fairies, like how which world are they in? Like are they have are they in like you know like are they sort of no, because if there's earth and if there's heaven, for whatever people want to call they between it, between worlds. Yeah, are they like like do they where do they sit? Are they more on earth? Are they on earth? I suppose I'm asking. Like I don't know how to explain. Are they this goes back to the question I answered you before. It's an Irish. It's an <laughs> Irish solution to an Irish problem. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> it's somewhere in the <laughs> middle. <laughs> yeah, it's always I. That's always my thing. Yeah, the answer. If, if you can't... It's an Irish solution to an Irish problem. It's in the middle. Uh, <laughs> you know, guard the tax of the tractor is in the post. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pat, do it's you in the post. Do you see a time when, when that kind of healing and that original belief in the land, do you mm. see a time in the not-too-distant future when we'll move a little bit more toward back towards all of that? Uh, well, if you look at it since... Since I was a child, going back, let's say, 30 years ago, and let's mm. say, look at, let's say since the hunger strikes on, 35, 40 years ago, like mm. the spirit of Ireland has risen to mightiness. Mm. You know, it has come on yeah, that's 60%. Cool. Before that, you were down to one religion, one thing, one thing only, and that was it. You couldn't, you, you like, 
if you're straight off it, all right, you were out on your own, you're out in a limb. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's yeah. But the the the, the great the great push and the great push for spiritualism in Ireland mm. is now. That's amazing. Yeah. That's Never so true. Never more so than now. Yeah. <laughs> I think if we let it, if we miss this, if we miss, ah, we won't fucking miss like this time. A penalty <laughs> No fucking yeah. way am I missing this time. We have no, no. to do stupid things. I'm not doing this shit again. <laughs> like the great spirituality. I just hope, I just hope that we're not foolish enough to let it slip by, for not for yeah. our sake, but for our children's sake. 100%. Yeah. And yeah. to see the country that we may have. Like, we're up nearly 7 million people now, you know, in mm. Ireland. That's mad. We have, we're going to, we're going to have to to learn, to learn to live with one another. Yeah. yeah. We can't go to Australia or America or England. So, if you're difficult, you can't get a plane out and leave your baggage behind you. You're going to have to learn. <laughs> we're going to have to learn to live with one another. Yeah. So what are we going to do? We're going to have to learn to look at this land, look at this country, and look at the way it's going to be developed for our kids absolutely and we have we have we, we have the capacity to feed 30 to 40 million people anytime we want to but what way are we going to do this is another problem are we going to go one road of mass production of one one food that nobody wants <laughs> are we going to go down the road of having lots of different foods that somebody wants yeah yeah like we should have learned the lesson of the famine we relied on the potato yeah failed are we going to learn the lesson we're lying on the milk it's dairy 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 the fire and dairy at your dna and when that fails are we going to say the chinese owned on these dairy farms you know yeah and the irish man coming into work for the milk these cows on on a, on a, on a number of spaces yeah or are is we it... going to get to the stage that the land is going to be there for our people to feed us the, the latter, I believe in it. Is it right, the, Pat, that you don't use any chemicals or sprays or weed killers and stuff on your farm? Look at, we can all say sprays, chemicals and all that, yes, all that's bad and, and, and not good. We can, if we're overproducing one crop, it's, it's just as bad as, as spraying, you know what I yeah. mean? Mm. Do we need to, to produce all this stuff for export and still our people has no work? Are we going to produce food that will create jobs in rural Ireland and then can be packaged into two pound pounds and sent to fucking Berlin, Paris or London? Or are we going to be sending volumes of stuff off that there's no real ma marketing, you know? Yeah. You see, like, the chemical thing is one thing. It's not good. Look at, all you need to do is look at our hospitals with cancer. Yeah. Mm. It's yeah. filled. That answers your question. Like, your, 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 your hospitals, before COVID came along, the cancer ward is full of this. The, the uh, where is this coming from? It's coming from modern medicines and modern, modern sprays, you know. So I don't know. I think that though, the the thing is is that if we if we can, if we can, encourage the generation that's after us, not to to be too materialistic, and just have enough. Yeah, that's when we're going to win. Yeah, I th I think it will get to that stage. Um, I I think although like it mightn't seem like it at the moment, I do think, I think even like I see like I don't know people even younger than me that like they are although like yeah they're still maybe a bit materialistic that they might like certain fashion and stuff like that and I think that's okay because I think people I mean even the Celts a long time ago had a certain fashion but they're definitely. It's different now. I feel like the age of pennies will sort of pass us by quicker than we think and the sort of, uh, what they call a fast fashion or that. I see um, people younger than me becoming more appreciated towards, you know, their clothes, like, way, like, you know, old Ireland, whereas, like, you'd go and get fitted for any bit of clothing, clothing you got sort of thing, like, and you'd keep on to it. And that was the clothes that fit you for life because, you know, um, 
stuff like that. That's only a small thing, obviously. Clothes, uh, as well, it's a big thing, but it's one of many things. And uh, I, I've definitely, I've definitely seen changes. And although it doesn't seem like it at the moment, because I don't know, there's lots of negative news. But I suppose when you go out and have a walk, you can sometimes see that there are still people smiling. And uh, <laughs> I don't know, there's definitely. I think it will get to that stage. Um, yeah. Hopefully, it will. Hopefully, the education system there's a full stop put to it now. Yeah. Like. This, the leaving cert is here for the last hundred years. They're telling me can't be done it out. They need to get rid of it. Like, how are, you, how are you going to have a leaving cert that was out a hundred years ago uh, yeah. and teach, pers- teach a person a hundred years ago about a rocket going to Mars? Yeah. It wasn't out that way. So it's, not, it's not irrelevant. You know what I mean? Yeah. Our, 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 Gene therapy and stuff like that. It wasn't there at that time. So mm. and, and, and computerization. Look at I'm able to talk to you guys here sitting in sitting in the parlor just having a chat with you and my tractor is stuck out board on the field. But <laughs> do you want if we can finish up is, as well if you're if you is, need these, to these Yeah, I I I finishing up, but like the if education you... system is wrong. Yeah. And it's as wrong as could be because most of it had been look at one sided, it's geared towards what do you want teaching a farmer algebra for? Mm. He's no business with algebra <laughs> in the world of God, he doesn't need it. He just need common sense, yeah. You know, it's, it's, common sense is a, is a brilliant thing, yeah. you know. Leave the guys with the algebra doing their things, yeah. And they leave insert like for the, the, the look at the computer end of it, like you like, oh, uh, it, it, it's needed. It wasn't needed. They never knew nothing about computers a hundred years ago. And mm. they hadn't the bloody visionary a hundred years ago either because they're a hun- we're a hundred years on and we haven't got no spirituality on in the last few years. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. So I think now is the time with a huge population in Ireland, which is going to be huge, guys. This is going to be this is going to be a great time to live in Ireland. I, I agree. Because the more people you have in Ireland the more things you can buy and sell. I can sell you a loaf of bread. <laughs> you can come and do a day's work for me. Yes. And yeah. this is this is this is going to be like yeah. or, or these countries, these, these, these countries. If you have no population, you have nothing. Mm-hmm. We have a great and we have we are a great people. We're a risen people. True. I think the computer has, has done great things. It has mm. broke the mold. Absolutely. And, you know. Now is the time, like, look at our our politicians is still living back in the 30s. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're still fighting about stuff in the 30s. That yeah. Doesn't make any sense. They didn't make any sense then. It's not making any sense now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's, like they're arguing about stuff that's not, that's irrelevant to the, to, if you look at a 15 year old today and look at 16 year old and look at their, their, their out on life. Mm. And look at the the, 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 the the grasp of things to have. You know what I mean? The broad mind that they have. Yeah. And, and that it, it, it's actually brilliant. You see, the youth is brilliant in Ireland. Yeah, definitely. You know, guys, I, I, I'm going to have to go shortly now. Of course. Okay for you? No, of course. The tractor is stuck. And I have three people coming to me for healings at half two. Oh, really? Oh. Busy. Busy to healing. Hey, one quick question can I ask you? Yeah, but... I'm busy. I tell you, and I have all, I have yours, lambing as well, and cows, calf, and uh, oh, Jesus. I'm busy time on this farm. <laughs> Can I ask you one quick question? Because it's mighty nice talking to you. Good talking to you too, Pat. It's mighty nice talking to you guys. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I, 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 I keep in keep in touch with me because yeah. look at, I'm a kind of a skeleton man on computers. I don't have any Wi-Fi <laughs> out on the farm. I I wouldn't have it because Colin, I need to come to the house for yeah. huh? Come down to Thurles for a match. You can call into us, yeah? Well, I'll tell you something. I had many great days in Thurles. Good. Did you ever, ever have Thurles fresh milk? Have you ever had the milk had, from Thurles? I'll tell you something. I had many days. We lost our, 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 our semi-finals in Thurles. Yeah. Matches. But I had great I had great days drinking after it. Great <laughs> track all the way down yeah. until I hit Port Omina and back home. Yeah. But dim days, I will never, you can never take away from me now. Sure. Yeah. Sure. That's really Sit good. Uh, I will, I will. We'll, at the help of God, we'll be back down. Yeah. And in the meantime, Pat will write you a letter. <laughs> yeah. Joe, where, where, what part of the country are you from? 
Well, I'm I'm from the UK. She's from Cavan, <laughs> Cavan accent. <laughs> I've been living here I for seven years, just over seven years. So I'm Irish by nationality as well now. So yeah, I've not. Are you living in Paris as well? Are you? I live in Port Leash. Oh, well, not so bad. Yeah, nice yeah. part of the country. Port That's Leash right. is nice. Yeah, yeah. Mm, good Tesco across here. Across the silver mines there, and in and in, and in, 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 across the silver mines, and and in, in, into the sleeve blooms and down yeah. to the bottom of it. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, we've got Tesco's and everything here as well. <laughs> Yeah, but it's uh, it's you're you're in a very spiritual part of the world as well. Yeah, if you cross over yeah, there so up I into understand. the sea blue mountains and across yeah. across into the silver mines. Yeah. So like yeah. it's like we are we are a soap board with yeah. a mountain in the middle that yeah. nobody can take away from us, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. It's it's it, it we're a sheltered land with mountains by the sea and then that little mountain in the little middle. Hill. Mm. The hill it's a brilliant area. thing. Guys, I want to have to yeah, go. Yeah, we'll leave you off, Pat. Thanks a million for coming on. Thanks loads, Pat. Appreciate your time. Thanks a million. Look, guys, you'll be able to follow me on Facebook and send me messages or whatever, and I know who you are. Let we me will. Know. We will. Thanks okay. a million, guys. That's lovely, Pat. Thank you. See you, Pat. Thanks. Love you, guys. Love you, guys. Love Bye. you, too. See ya. So um yeah that was that was good that was a lovely conversation did you have fun you, you yeah. were oh shit okay, sorry. Two seconds. <laughs> we'll be we'll be back in the sh- well whatever whatever we're we're sorting out this like hullabaloo anyway that's like uh, all this sort of fucking trying to talk and press buttons at the same time um yeah we have good stuff good things coming I hate when people people say that like. They say good things come, and you should not say that. Just bring the good things. Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah. It was good, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a really good conversation. Yeah. He's a lovely man. Password. He was really cool. Like, mm. um, it'd be cool to get him down in person as well. Like, and yeah. 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 Um, yeah, sure. Uh, thanks for watching. If you're watching on YouTube, and thanks for listening. If you're listening on Spotify, once again, shout out to the Belgium massive because we're getting many streams in belgium which is really interesting um and yeah like for the people as someone donated money on the spotify um link uh yeah i appreciate that whoever it is the sort of name is anonymous um yeah and yeah any support um we do really appreciate whether it's just support and sharing the podcast whatever um yeah that we really appreciate all support equally and financial support for from our patreon.com which the link i'm going to put up on the screen here right there our link is in the description um patreon.com where we upload uh no guest episodes um yeah and more content uh anything else mm, do you have anything else i could do that every time it's like uh right anyway thanks for watching and i hope you go for walks and i hope you find the lovely fairies i don't i hope you don't yeah have a, have a walk don't go down the wrong road and um and have a lovely week yeah have a lovely week uh god bless bye bye